I'm Lizzie Harrison for Card Player TV, here today with Nanad Medic. Thanks for coming by. I know you had a late night last night. Uh, yeah, no problem. Yeah, yeah. I took it down, and uh, of course I had to go celebrate, so uh, yeah. Nanad just won the World Championship Pot Limit Hold'em event. It was event number one of the World Series, so now he's not only a World Poker Tour winner, he's a World Series of Poker Bracelet winner. So tell me about the tournament. How did it begin for you? Uh, it began and ended pretty smoothly. Really? Uh, it was just yeah. smooth sailing? Yeah, I had... Um, I don't know. Most of the time, most of the time when I was all in, I had uh, the best hand. One, one uh, at the final table once, I got it all in with Ace King versus uh, Two Kings. I was in a pretty Flopped bad spot nuts. there, but I had a pretty good flop. So, uh, yeah, it went pretty smoothly. Uh, I didn't really play a lot of big pots. The pot limit hold them uh, tournament. The, I don't know. Uh, I tried to play a lot of small pots, and I uh, was fortunate enough to uh, to do well and take it down. Well, it was a big buy-in event for the first event of the World Series, which isn't as it always is. Did you expect it to be such a stacked field because it was such a big buy-in tournament? Yeah, yeah, I expected. Uh, usually, the pot I mean, limit hold'em. all the pros em, came out. Yeah, the pot limit hold'em events usually. Uh, usually, it's the top players. It's a really good event to play, and uh, the, the pros know that. Um, and the ten thousand buy-ins, it's usually a better field. I, I expected actually more players just because it's the first event, mm -hmm. but. Um, so if you're playing against a lot of top pros, what types of adjustments do you have to make to your game as a pro yourself? Um, I don't know. It just uh, you always got to make adjustments in poker. So it d depends on the uh, depends on the table, and it depends what type of pros you're playing against. Everybody plays different. Everybody's got their own style of play. I like to. I don't know. I like to. I play different against different players. It depends who's to my left, who's to my right. There's so many factors involved. That's true. So, yeah. I don't know. So, at, was there a specific point in the tournament where you really chipped up and just started steamrolling people, or was it just a nice slow um, climb? It was kind of slow. I had a big pot in day one. Uh, it was kind of a funny hand. Um, it was almost a misdeal. Um, <laughs> I was uh, two away from under the gun. I looked down, I, I got two aces. The, the first two people already folded. Um, and uh, the guy that was in the small blind noticed that he had three cards. <laughs> and the dealer said miss deal and he threw the he threw the deck down and then uh, the guy to my left he's like he started freaking out he's like no no it's not a miss deal there was action to the right so then he they would call the flow over and they said no it's not a miss deal mm -hmm. um so he picked up the deck and uh, i don't know i raised it this guy re-raised me the small blind went all in for like twenty thousand. uh at the time i had a hundred thousand but the, the average stack was 50 and this guy had me covered this guy had two hundred thousand he was the chip leader Okay. So I, 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 made a, I made a little min raise, and this guy had two kings, and he put me all in. So that was a fortunate spot. I, I, that brought me up to, that brought me up to two hundred thousand. I think I was chip leader at that point. That, that was day, day one. Did you know you had two aces in your hand while the floor was over there ruling, or had you not even looked yet? I, I looked. Yeah, I looked <laughs> over. I almost puked when they said this deal. I finally picked up a hand, and I saw that this guy was really excited. The guy to my left, because he called the floor over, and he, yeah, yeah, so definitely. Um, very fortunate spot right there. Good situation. Yeah, yeah. So going into the final table, were you familiar with the other players in their game? Oh yeah, I was familiar with all of them. Uh, the the Mike Sowers and uh, Meet, uh, the two online players. I didn't know them too well, uh, but I I played with them a little bit uh, during this tournament. Okay. And uh, both both very good players. Uh, but yeah, I, the rest of them. Yeah, I played with them uh, a lot. A lot. I don't know. Uh, every every one of the every one of them I played a lot of hours with. So I, kinda, I was kind of familiar with their styles. So. Was there any one player who you thought would be your toughest opponent at the final table, or you wanted to stay out of their way a little bit? Um, Patrick Antonius, if he got the chips, uh, he, he you were he lucky started, he started on the short <laughs> yeah, stack. Yeah, he started off with the short stack, but he's a very tough player. Very tough player, especially short-handed. Um, all throughout. Uh, just a solid player, yeah. He's the guy uh, I was the most worried about, I guess. Uh, Mike Sexton as well, very good player. Um, they were all great players. Yeah, yeah. So it's hard. To, it's hard to say. Andy Block, I thought played real well. I, had, I didn't really play many hours with Andy Block, uh, but I thought he played really well though, throughout the whole tournament. So what else do you have going on for the series? Are you planning on playing as many events as possible, or are you being selective? Uh, no, yeah, this this year uh, coming in, uh, I told myself I was going to try to play uh, as many tournaments as I can. I came in, uh, la last year I came in uh, wanting to play the cash games only. I only played, I think, four or five events last year, so um, this year coming in, I told myself, no, I, I, I didn't want to play cash games, just uh, concentrate on tournaments. And have you been more focused on improving your tournament game? Uh, well, it's just, it's been one tournament, but uh, I don't well, know. Well, in the it's, past uh, yeah, year, the, the last, uh, yeah, I've been concentrating, uh, I've been trying to concentrate more on uh, tournaments. Um, yeah, I don't know, a lot of times I came in with a 
bad attitude. Well, not really a bad attitude, but like I'd stay up late playing cash games, come in tired. Um, so this year I'm I'm trying uh, I'm trying to keep stay in there mentally for the tournaments. It seems like a lot of the all ins at the final table ended up being pocket pairs versus pocket pairs. How do you decide if your pocket pair is good if you don't have aces and you're at a final <laughs> table? Like, what do you do if you look down at queens or jacks? It, it was it's insane. Just, yeah, yeah. <laughs> there's a lot of times there's nothing you can do about it. Yeah, especially any, what goes into deciding if you're going to make the all in call with jacks or queens? Well, it, you just it, chip stack, your stack compared to, um, I don't know, compared to the pot size. Uh, I guess you get a read on the player. It depends on how tight the player that, that's, that moved you in. I don't know if they're aggressive. You can you can make looser calls with uh, whatever smaller pairs or mm -hmm. I don't know. Well, uh, other hands. So it just depends on the player and it depends on how much money is in the pot. So I don't know. Well, but uh, yeah, it was oh, the, ahead, the, the final. Sorry, the final table was pretty crazy. Uh, there was so many, especially at the start. There was so many big hand over big hand. It there was just was. nothing. Nothing. I don't know. The hands played themselves. So. It was just uh, enough. Especially because it was the sure stacked players that were having. Yeah, yeah. So But even if it, a lot of the, I don't know, the two kings versus two aces for Patrick, uh, that was pretty. No matter how many chips he had, that, that didn't matter. Uh, yeah, and then the other times it was. I think Phil Phil Locke had two jacks twice mm -hmm. with with his stack. Uh, there's nothing he could have done. It was just unfortunate. Well, you put Chris Bell all in when you had pocket jacks. Yeah, were you confident yeah. you had the best hand there? Um. Yeah, pretty confident. He raised under. I think it was maybe six, six, five, or six, probably six-handed at the yeah. time, and uh, he raised under the gun. I was a little bit worried. I know he's a pretty solid player, but uh, nothing I can do there. I got to re-raise it. I had Kathy. I think I had Kathy in the big blinds. She had a. She didn't have a dangerous stack for me to re-raise and be worried about her. Okay. So um, I don't know. He he opened the pot. I forget for for how much. Maybe. I think maybe one one twenty or something, and I re-raised it up to three fifty, uh, with the two jacks just. I don't know. He he was short stacked. I think he only had 250 or so, if I recall correctly, or maybe he had 280. So it's just the, the hand played itself. I don't know. I knew he was committed, so I was just hoping that he, hoping I had him in bad shape. And it turns out I did. He had the ace three. Not not a very good turn for me, ace on the turn, but uh, jack on the. He river. got there on the river. That's yeah. all that counts. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't matter how you get there. <laughs> So the final hand of the tournament, you had a 7-5, which is the same hand you had when you won your World Poker Tour title at Foxwoods. Yeah. yeah. Are you a superstitious guy? Not really, not really, but that is pretty funny. I didn't, even, I didn't notice that. My dad uh, called me afterwards, um, and he told me, uh, he told me that, yeah, he's like, is that your new favorite hand? Uh, so I guess, yeah, I didn't even notice until he mentioned it, but yeah, that's pretty funny. Yeah. Congratulations on that. Thanks. Lizzie Harrison with Nod Medic for Card Player TV.